everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Tamika and today I'm gonna be sharing my May wrap up with you y'all you might have noticed that I didn't do a mid-month wrap up and the reason I didn't do that is because the first half of the month I really was not reading a ton at all and I just didn't want to put the pressure on myself to make a mid-month wrap up if I wasn't reading enough because I feel like it would have contributed more to my slump than it already was so let's talk about the 12 things that i did read within may and let me go ahead and clarify 12 is not a low number that is not that is not nothing i promise i acknowledge that 12 is still a lot of books and a lot of manga to consume within a month because i know a lot of people don't even read that but for me as someone who not only makes content but also reads a lot anywhere from 15 to 20 titles in a month 12 is low and that is on the low end of my normal reading anyway and the only reason i was able to get through 12 is because i did have the weekend away at izzy's where i was able to sit down and bust out some books so first of all i did read one thriller in the month i read two horror books i did read four manga and then i read five romances so not a like huge variation there pretty typical within what i would normally read romance being the main thing that i was reading but manga closely following that as well as you know just kind of continuing my my trend of reading more thrillers and more horror on a regular basis so let's talk about the mystery thriller first so the first book on my list is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. This is a mystery thriller centering around a wedding day. So we have two characters who are getting married and we do follow an ensemble cast. We do follow several characters throughout this and all of the characters do interweave in some way, in some fashion. And it is a very interesting story because not only are we finding out at the beginning of the story that someone has a tragic accident, but we are literally following flashbacks and the lives within those characters all the way back to when they were children rather than the in just the within that time period so you're really seeing the motivations of everyone rather than just what's happening within that three-day span so we start the story off with two characters who are getting married and you do get introduced to the best man the families the wife of one of the people within the wedding the sister and several other characters and you were really following along seeing how everyone in the story connects with one another and how the story is going to play out i literally cannot tell you anything else and i really don't know how to review this for you because my issue was i felt like it was a little anticlimactic for the ending i still really enjoyed it i did have a fun time with most of everything that was going on in here the real issue i had was just I felt like the ending was a little anticlimactic and it could have been done a little better but overall this is just a really good introduction to Lucy Foley and I'm very excited to continue reading. Alright so next up we're going to talk about some horror books that I've been reading and I just I just want to say really quickly that I love horror and I know you all know this so let's talk about Splatterfest which was a horror book that I was so pleasantly surprised by because with the, with the title, with the concept, you're going to be like, okay, this is either going to go one or two ways. I'm either going to love this or this is going to be horrible and we're going to just say absolutely not at the beginning of it. It was absolutely fantastic. I loved this. This is called Splatterfest because we're literally following a horror convention that takes place at a compound. We have a cult within the story. The leader of the cult takes them to a compound that's where they live and he ends up murdering them all and killing himself very reminiscent of jonestown or jamestown may's gonna kill me for butchering that so very reminiscent of other cult like things that have happened that we all know about we get to this compound where they thought it was a good idea to host a horror convention and everyone starts dying they expected but it was absolutely hilarious it's everything you could want in a slasher and i don't say that lightly because as someone who loves slashers who you know i consume a lot of them i've i've watched bad ones i've read bad ones i have you know i've i've watched good ones i've read good ones i've seen the mediocre side this was just a horror fan or a slasher fans like wet dream this story was just fantastic it was so good i absolutely loved everything about it i just wish that it would have lasted forever because it was just comedy gold i saw everything coming in like the best way like it followed the slasher 
like beats so freaking well and it was just so well done and I will never shut up about it. I cannot wait to force everyone and their mom to read this. I've already made Ashley read it so we are living, we are doing good already. The other one I need to talk about is Womb and this one is actually pronounced like room but if you had a speech impediment and you couldn't say your r's it's specifically called that because our hero in the story has a speech impediment and he cannot say his r's so i read this book because carol from carol marie reads posted about it on instagram and she was like this is the most disturbing disgusting extreme horror book i've ever read i don't know how i did it i don't know like how i managed to get through it like i kept saying i'm gonna put this down i'm gonna stop but i didn't because i just had to know what was happening and i was like bet cool uh carol what's happening in the book. I need some content warnings. Let me know what kind of things are in here because I'm gonna probably proceed with caution but I'm still probably gonna proceed. Um, so I like got the warning and she tells me the typical like like bodily fluids, uh, bodily functions, which is feces, abortion, very graphic violence, all kinds of shit, right? Like very, very disturbing shit. So, so you know, we, we prostitution, just weird shit, right? Like really weird shit. So I'm like, cool bet. So I downloaded it and I was like, I'm going to read this book. And I did. I have a couple things I want to say. First of all, I love extreme horror. Like that is one of my absolute favorite things. You all heard me like gush about The Girl Next Door. Um, you all watched me haul a copy of I Spit on Your Grave, which is one of the most disturbing horror movies ever, in my opinion, because you know, of all the shit that goes down in it. And I, I just really love graphic horror. I love graphic horror. I like disturbing horror. I like extreme horror. I like to, I like as extreme as you can get it. And I don't really have any triggers when it comes to that kind of thing, just because if I know what, what is within it, I'm going to be okay. Right? Like I'm going to be able to handle it nine times out of 10. So I say that because I don't really feel, feel like this was as disturbing as I wanted. I was really expecting more. That's not saying it's not disturbing. I'm not going to tell y'all it's not disturbing. I'm not going to sit here and say that this is a cake, a cakewalk, a walk in the park, and that, you know, you should just read it even if you are, you know, just remotely interested. That's not what I'm saying in the slightest. Not even close. Because for the average person who does not, you know, watch disturbing breakdowns on their free time and just because they're bored on a Saturday morning, this is not going to be for you. I'm just... This is not for everyone. This is for people who can handle it. This is for people who have the stomach for it. This is people who just have the morbid curiosity. If you are even remotely turned off by anything I said, do not read it. And if you start it and you do start reading it and it fucking creeps you out, stop it. Just go ahead and stop because there were scenes in here that twisted my stomach. There were two in particular that really twisted my stomach. And those two were the literal abortion scene. Uh, and I'm going to give context warning here that there is a literal wire clothes hanger used. And there's also a scene where something is being inserted somewhere and a bone breaks. And I don't want to clarify exactly what it is because it is at the end of the story and I don't want to give away the entire ending. But I will go ahead and say a content warning for Broken Bones. They describe in detail the breaking of this bone and i just break broken bones uh, uh, broken bones do it for me i hate them i hate blood and i hate broken bones um uh, i hate the description of broken bones i hate skeletons if y'all didn't know that i'm absolutely terrified of skeletons they creep me out not like skulls and stuff like that like i have literally all over my house but i mean like skeletons like real skeletons bones broken bones that kind of shit I can't do it. I, it makes me sick. I have to turn my head in horror movies whenever a broken bone is, is in play. Because I just can't do it. They're nasty. I can't do it. It grosses me out. The fact that I have a skeleton within me, don't like it. Can't stand it. Makes me want to like jump from a really tall building. We're getting off topic, but the point is I can handle a lot of shit. Those are the two things that bothered me the most. This is following a dude who hires a prostitute to be in this room where a lot of weird shit's happened. I cannot say anything else because this is a novella. If it's remotely interesting or you are remotely curious, check out the Goodreads page, read the description. If you're into that, if you're okay with it, proceed with caution. This is extreme and I do not recommend this for the, light, the faint of heart. Like I'm, I'm gonna say it like this is, if you are squeamish, if you are not used to extreme horror, do not go. Do not read this. But if you are interested and you are a fan of horror, go on. I think you'll have a fun time. 
All right, let's talk about some manga. There are two on here that I'm not going to talk about in depth because I do have a vlog coming out that you will see these in. So those books are Creature Volume 1 and The Flowers of Evil Volume 1. I did read both of these for a horror vlog that I'm doing with Ashley, so I'm not going to share any thoughts. I'm not going to share anything else about them. If you want full context, you want full thoughts on those, that is coming very soon. The other two that I read were arcs that I had on NetGalley that I just needed to get to because I hadn't read them yet. So we have Chasing After Oya Koshaba, which is the first volume of a Yuri manga series that I was really excited to receive a copy of through NetGalley. I did get this one through Kodanja and I just love Yuri manga. Let's be real, anytime there's a Yuri manga involved, I'm gonna be requesting that shit because my entire personality is how much I love gay shit and this was no exception. This was absolutely adorable. I gave this a four star. And this one we kind of time jump a little bit because we start the story with the girl coming back to her hometown and asking about our main character who she accidentally kisses uh, in high school and has a really romantic relationship with. And then once they come back, she doesn't come back to her. Uh, and they like pull, she pulls away and this is this girl's first love. I really liked this. I thought it was a really cute manga and a very cute uh, start to a Yuri series. And I'm really excited to see where it goes from here. Uh, the characters were honestly just freaking adorable and I could not have asked for a better start to a manga series. And I cannot wait to continue reading it. This is just right up my alley. Then we have She Is My Knight. I gave this one a three star. This is a size difference kind of manga. We have a very tall heroine and a hero who is just a little bit shorter than her. And this one is just really cute. It's the two of them bickering and fighting and one of them having a crush on one and not wanting to admit it. And it is just really cute. And I really can't say a lot about some of these mangas because it's just like the first volume. So I can't give you full in-depth thoughts or full synopses of any of these because you don't really know the full story within the first manga and I don't know how to tell you what's going to happen within the story or what I can share without spoiling it because it only is the first volume. So I enjoyed this. I gave it a three star and I will be continuing it. So those are the manga. Let's hop into the romances because we have five of those and then we are done and that is all I read in May. So let's talk about them. First up, let's talk about the dark one which is by none other than Nikki St. Crow. I know y'all don't you don't want to hear me talk about Nikki St. Crow anymore. I know y'all don't want to hear me talk about the dark one anymore but here we are. Dark Peter Pan retelling. Reverse harem. It is just fantastic. Okay that's all I got to say about it. We're not talking anymore. I will not be shutting up until the sequel is out in October. I'm not ready to wait that long for it but here we are. I'm having to wait. Thank you May. I you did this to me. You're the reason we are currently at this dilemma at this crossing point in my life so if you're even remotely interested in a dark peter pan reverse reverse harem a fairy tale retelling go check this out literally following wendy darling and peter pan and peter pan lost his shadow and he has the lost boys and he's kidnapping wendy darling when she turns 18 so he can try to get his shadow back it's a lot and it's fantastic we also have tris six venom which is one that i just did not anticipate loving as much as I did. I did a full reading vlog and I don't want to share all my thoughts here because I really I really love that vlog and I really want you all to go see it because I do have like an emotional breakdown in that vlog because we do deal so heavily with a character coming out and I just emotionally cannot handle it sometimes and I get very emotionally uh just emotionally touched by that kind of thing because you know gay um uh, so like it, i just love this book i love these characters i freaking love this story i love the way they are they are so mean to each other they are not good to one another they are not good for one another but they are at the same time i just really feel like they worked so well and their hatred was so like i understood it like i understood 100 percent why they hated the other one and I didn't fault either of them for their hatred. They both come from really broken homes and they're both really confused and scared and they don't know what to do with themselves. And I love them and I love how raw and real they are. I 100% recommend just going into it. If you are worried that the representation is not done well, you don't really have to worry because I thought it was, I thought it was done really well. These next two I'm going to talk about pretty quickly because my dumbass decided that I wanted to read uh two Brianna Hill books that 
I only had to read one this month, but I ended up reading two, so I read Little Dancer and Princess Brat. Little Dancer was just okay. Like, it was a three star. It was fine. Like, little play relationships, they're so, they're so fucking cute, right? Like, little play is so adorable. I think littles in, in like, these kind of relationships, they're adorable. I love them. I think it's so cute and precious, and I just want to squeeze their little cheeks because they just deserve the world, you know? Uh, but other than that, the entirety of that book was mediocre. Like... The writing was okay, the plot didn't really make any sense, um, the third act breakup was bad, and like everything else was just mediocre. Didn't really care about the sex scenes, I skipped through almost all of those, but like the little scenes were so precious. I just wanted to squeeze them. And like I could totally tell the difference of Brianna then versus Brianna now, and I'm really grateful that I have done this with Ashley and we have read from the beginning to the, the her newest books and like we are really seeing this together and talking about it with everyone because like the growth that Brianna has had is phenomenal and I love her. Uh, so her other book that I read, Princess Brat, I liked way more. This is a bodyguard romance and this one just worked so much better. This is a little play still because she is a little, she still acts like a little, but she's a brat, right? So this one, she's more bratty, she talks back more, there's more uh, impact play, things like that. And this one is just, in my opinion, way better. I'm not going to share full thoughts because we do have the live show coming up on Friday. So if you are curious on full thoughts from me and Ashley, make sure you're checking that out because that live show is going to be live this coming week. The last one that I want to talk about is Highland Shifter. I got on a shifter kick where I'm kind of wanting to get through a lot of shifter books now. And this is one that sounded interesting. This is a Highland historical romance kind of thing. So there's a time travel element and there's a shifter element. It's interesting. There's an interesting subplot. I enjoyed this. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, this is the kind of historical I love because it's just fucking ridiculous. And I don't have to like worry about the historical accuracy and I don't have to worry about anything like that because I struggle sometimes with historicals if they're not audiobooks because personally I get really bored reading historical but audiobooks can work for me and if it's done right I really love them like I love a Scottish accent so I love I love Highlanders I love Scotland I love that kind of thing within like historicals so those are usually a go for me and I had a fun time with this and I'm definitely not going to be recommending it soon. Definitely not. Tell me what your favorite shifter book is down in the comments and leave me a wolf emoji and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye everyone. Don't you wanna have fun? Don't you wanna have some fun? Yeah, it's baby said that they don't got a future. Future like